Welcome back to the Ultimate Decades Challenge. I'm so excited to be recording today's episode. I have just been at a complete loss of where I want to take this story after basically almost everyone survived the death rolls. I was honestly expecting a lot more deaths and I had a lot of different ideas of where I wanted to take different characters based on who survived. And it kind of threw me off and got me a little uninspired for a little while, but I have been adding lots of different stuff to the builds in the world. I have actually played through just a little bit of time just to get the story moving along and to get us a little bit closer to Gen 2. In this episode, we are going to start off at Sir Bishop's Castle. It is currently the third day of 1319, so I haven't played that much. We were in 1318 in the last episode, so I've just played through a couple of sim days just to kind of get myself back in a groove and back into the story. So we are at Sir Bishop's Castle. We're going to start off here today, and then we're going to go into our main household for a little while because unfortunately we do have Penelope's death from the famine rolls. Um, and so instead of saying she like died from starvation, we may just say she, we, you know, last episode she had the sickness. So we'll see how that plays out. But right now we are at Sir Bishop's castle. We haven't been here in a while other than for the castle heist. And I have a couple of things to update before we dive in. I've made a few updates to the build. Upstairs I've moved some things around. It's not very super noticeable. But I redid Sir Bishop's room. I gave the boys a extra bathroom because bathrooms were getting a little difficult in the game. So I added that and reworked their little library area where they do their studies. I gave them a chess table. Um, downstairs is pretty much the same. We still have the room where they come in and do um, it's sort of like the throne room. It's not super extravagant. Their dining area where the cooks do their cooking. I've seen all of this before in previous episodes, but what's new is this entire basement area, which honestly, I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty obsessed with. It's been a lot of fun to play in, so I'm going to put cutaway mode. They come down from one of the towers upstairs, and then what the bandits didn't know was there was this entire cellar so they only took such a small amount of the food that was available to the castle. So they have this entire pretty well stocked cellar down here. This is where the servants quarters are. So this is where Doyle is staying. And then we have a new sim and she helps do all of the cooking and stuff. So I added her just so we had a little bit more help. We have some extra rooms for when people come and stay for different events and things like that. I also added, I've been watching a ton of YouTube videos on life in like medieval times. So I added them in a little chapel cause that felt really relevant. We're gonna have Doyle is gonna do some blacksmithing and make some armor. And this is gonna be like the armor room. We're gonna fill that up with some armor. And then the most important thing I want to show you are the dungeons and Dante is here. And the reason Dante is here is because as the gang was escaping, I'm going to get the Sims in motion while we do this. I'm going to get Anne going on some breakfast and I will tell the story of how Dante came to be in a prison here. <laughs> and uh, as the bandits were packing up their... Um, as they were packing up at the abandoned cottage... They were making their getaway and the knights spotted them and rounded them up. And Dante, being the amazing leader that he is, he sacrificed himself basically so the rest of the gang, Anora, Ronan, and Faye could make their escape. So Dante was rounded up by the knights and he has been taken here. They have been trying to get information out of him as to where the rest of the gang is, but of course... He is very loyal to his tribe and he is not saying anything. So he's here. We're going to see how that plays out, what's going to happen to him. But for right now, he is all locked up and here at the castle. So let me go ahead. No one else is up. So I'm going to get Anne going on some breakfast for everyone. I think, let's see, I've got a cookbook down here so I can see what all she can make. I've been having so much fun since the famine, like doing the stock pantry. It's definitely more hands-on and more work to have to like 
manually add stuff to their inventories, but I really, really like it. Let's do some scotch eggs for breakfast. So we'll need um, salted meat flour, and then we already have the eggs. So let's go ahead and just, just grab two things of flour. And then let's see, we're starting to get low on salted meat because I think I've been making those a lot lately. So let's see. Go ahead and grab the flour and then let's she'll go upstairs and make that I think was that under where did I see that okay scotch eggs we will do a serving of four just for the night so we have of course uh Jasper and Wesley are still here I was gonna add an extra night at first but then with the horses and Dante we have a full household and um, I could put more Sims, but then I always forget and accidentally go into cast and then one of the Sims gets deleted. So I didn't want to have more than eight. So I just went ahead and it's just Wesley and um, Jasper for right now. Let me go ahead and get Doyle up while Anne is making the breakfast because the farm needs some attention. So let's go ahead and get him dressed for the day. And then everyone else should be getting up soon. They'll come up and have their breakfast. I'm really loving this lot. I've put a lot of stuff down that they can do. Um, so have him. He's basically the groundskeeper. At first, I was having him do all the cooking and everything, but it was just kind of a lot for one sim. So now him and Anne are both in charge of the castle. And I feel like um, Sir Bishop has known them for like a really long time. Like maybe he worked with them when, uh, like in his castle when he was a bit younger. Um, I think Sir Bishop kind of came from a long line of knights. Um, and now of course Sir Bishop is sort of like the head of the night guard for the kingdom currently. And um, I also been playing around with the royalty mod. So I've done a couple of things where I've gone into like the king's household I have assigned Sir Bishop as his at royal advisor and I've created a club for them so I'm going to probably be bringing them over and then something else I want to do soon is like have an event here at this castle where um, maybe it's something for the young knights and um like we have like a party where there's like dancing and drinks and food and all the things so let's go ahead and get the boys up because Food is ready. And then I've also changed all of their outfits to make them match like they're wearing, like even in their everyday and stuff that they're in like matching uniforms. Um, so they all look alike. They're all dressed the same as their bishop. It just gives them a little bit more of like a powerful presence, I feel like. And then a really exciting thing that's coming up. There's so much I feel like is Jasper's birthday into a young adult is coming up on Saturday. So he's probably, based on the way Morbid Gamer uh, broke down the age, age ranges, he is probably about 18 right now. He'll be like 21 when he's turning into a young adult. So he's like, you know, in between 18, 19 years old at the moment. And it is time that Sir Bishop is actually going to make him a squire. This probably would have come a lot sooner in his life, technically, but um, I'm going to cheat the energy. For some reason, this bed has not been functioning for Sir Bishop, so I'm just going to fulfill his energy. But Sir Bishop is actually going to officially ask Jasper to be his squire. And so that is very exciting. So let's have Anne go ahead and call all the boys to have their scotch eggs for breakfast. And then the servants don't eat the same food as everyone else. So they've got some food here. Doyle can come grab some as well. All right. So as the boys are getting their breakfast, I think Sir Bishop is going to talk to them up oh, Doyle. You've got to, <laughs> I have to kind of micromanage them because I don't want them like eating with them. So Doyle, you've got to go eat outside. Look, Anne's following the rules. All right, Doyle, you can stay. <laughs> Doyle's just, okay, there he goes. I was like, Doyle, you can't sit with us. <laughs> um, and then also Sir Bishop, I realized with the, um, 
he's officially a knight um, through the royalty mod. So now he has like different animations of how he stands and stuff. Um, Wesley, no, I don't think you like deception, but I think Sir Bishop is chatting with them about Ronan and he's like, you guys need to, you know, try to get as much information out of him as you can. Like Jasper, what do you know about the situation? Like that's your sister. Where do you think she would go? What do you think she's doing? So Jasper is like kind of conflicted because in a way he kind of wants to protect his sister. Jasper's kind of like conflicted with sharing what he knows because he knows about their little hideaway spot and that's a potential place that she might be. And so, so far he has not shared that information, but he's thinking that in order to be loyal to the kingdom, he definitely needs to probably share that so they can try to hunt and find Anora. And let's see right now. Also, yes, he wants to chat with his crush Maya. So in today's episode, we're actually going to spend a little bit of time um, with Maya because he is getting up there in age and marriage will be coming soon. Maya is currently living at the castle. She is a lady in waiting to the queen's court. She's primarily in charge of helping take care of the two um, daughters and she does help out with the queen sometimes. So Jasper is still madly in love with his Maya and so we will be spending some time with them doing that today. Let's see, Wesley, let's check in. Okay, so Dante is very, very hungry. So I think what I'm gonna do is have, uh, Anne is gonna go ahead and pick up some eggs and she is gonna bring those down to Dante down in the dungeons. I love this down here. I'm gonna put the walls up and follow her through like the hallways. Like, oh, it just gives me like such castle vibes. I just realized I still need to paint the ceilings. Um, but I love this so much. Okay. And so what she is gonna do, I think she can come through. Can you come through the door? I'm actually not really sure. Okay, she can't. So we're gonna say that she just placed that through for him. And so I'm not even going to control Dante. Like, we've placed the food for him. He's really, really hungry. We'll see if he eats. Okay, so he did. He took it. So he has a chamber pot in there. He has a sink and a bed. And so basically at this point, like, his social is getting pretty low. But I imagine his fun is probably going to get pretty low at a certain point. So I'm not sure what we're going to do with Dante yet. We're going to see what happens. But he's in there. He's got his food. He's just hanging out. And so I think what I want to do now is actually have the boys come up and do some archery with Sir Bishop. All right, so the boys are up here with Sir Bishop and at this point now he can actually mentor them. I think once they're done with training, he is going to probably officially ask Jasper to be a squire. Let me check in on Jasper's skill. So he's about to hit another level. So yeah, he's almost level five. I think archery goes to level 10. Oh no, Jasper's feeling sick. Uh, one of the things I've realized is with the moodlets for when they're sick, if you have them drink water and or take a nap, they'll get another moodlet that they are um, battling their illness with like natural remedies. And I think that's pretty cool. So I wanna try to do that. Okay, so he's level five archery. He can now watch and learn from higher skill archers and can craft basic bow at the work table. Okay, I wanna actually try that. So I'm gonna have him stop and we're gonna say that Sir Bishop is like, all right, buddy, like stop dropping your shoulder. Actually, he's doing pretty good. He's hitting the target like every single time. But um, okay, Jasper, move aside. I wanna see this how this interaction works. So. Sir Bishop is a max archer. Jasper, we'll take care of your sickness in just a second, buddy. I want to see how, watch and learn. Okay. So now we can watch and learn if Sir Bishop would actually start shooting his arrows. Okay, here, Wesley, you go ahead and actually, yeah, you're level five, so you can watch and learn as well. You guys watch Sir Bishop. Sir Bishop, what is, why are you, there he goes. Okay. So now the boys are watching and learning. So that should be building their skills. I am gonna go ahead. Sir Bishop is actually going to ask Jasper 
to be his squire. Oh gosh, and I forget about their needs. Okay, he has to go to the bathroom. Thank you, master. I'm honored to hold this position. So let me see. I'm not even sure. That's part of the royalty mod. So I'm not sure. Squire. Give honor of becoming a squire. Let's see what happens with that because I haven't actually played around with this too much yet. So I'm excited to try out some of these. Okay, it's just going to be the same pop up. So I think now Jasper's Cat, uh, social panel. Yeah, it says he's a squire. This young Sim has the privilege of being a knight squire. So he's got that. And then we'll see if that gives, I think maybe Sir Bishop can now like call on him um, for different things. I'm not really sure. It's just the same option, give honor being squire. So we may have to just like <laughs> play pretend like so much of Sims, but We'll see how that goes. Sir Bishop is going to go ahead, come up and use his chamber pot. Let's see how the boys are doing. Not too bad. They're getting a little bit hungry, so we need to get Anne going on some lunch. And while she does that, they'll come up and do some of their um, battle strategy lessons. I've been having them do research and debate to build battle strategy. So let's see. Anne is down here. And go ahead and... Clean up the mess that is down here. Okay, if we do roast chicken, we can do a chicken, carrot, and potato. Um, so we'll come have her come get that. So I think chicken. We already have carrots from the garden, and then we need four potatoes. So they're starting to run a little low on potatoes, so they'll need to stock up on that for sure. Come make roast chicken and let's see do the boys make it upstairs okay they did all right you guys go ahead jasper do level one research and debate and then i know um let's see level two for wesley so wesley is a little bit older than jasper so i'll need to make that apparent that he's going to age up or maybe i'll just keep them the same age just to make it like easier for gameplay um but i do think wesley's like maybe like a year to two years older than jasper um he, He's been training for a night since he was way, way younger than Jasper. Jasper, I forgot you were sick. Did that pass? Feeling angry from your hot-headed trait. What what pissed you off, Jasper? You just became a squire. Doyle, I want to get him going on some blacksmithing for some armor. Um, resume suit of armor. So I want to make a suit of armor for each of the knights. And see how that goes. And then <laughs> I have not been taking care of the animals. Um, I'm glad I've got a lot more going on the slot because at first I was like, oh, I don't have anything to do here. So then adding a couple of like servants and responsibilities for different Sims has been good. Okay, this is a knight who's at the door. Let's go invite him in. <laughs> He's coming over for a meeting with Sir Bishop, I suppose. Um, here, go ahead and... Oh, wait. Nope, not that one. Call to meal. Let's have Sir Christoph Reeves. Let's have him go ahead and have come get a meal as well. Let's pick up another serving and bring that down. Let's see. Let's see. Dante. I'll put that in her inventory, but I'm not going to give it to him until his food. Maybe it's in the red if I don't forget. Actually, I'll probably just have him do it now because I will forget and then... Wait, oh, I was like, where'd Dante go? He's crying. Oh no, he's having a rough go. It says, I use the royalty mod to lock, lock him up. He's lonely, feeling sad from lack of time spent with other Sims, becomes desolate in 15 hours. Oh, poor Anne might come down and chat with him. She seems like she's really nice. They've probably given her very strict instructions to like not really engage with him, but I feel like Anne has a really good heart and she wouldn't be able, she's gonna like see how sad he is and she's gonna like, chat with him just a little bit but not too much she doesn't want to get in trouble she has guests upstairs so let's go ahead and drop him some food here and then i'm gonna cure up some just social interactions um let's just ask about his day um, maybe she gets to know him because she's like, what got you locked up in here? So I'm going to leave you, Anne. You're not supposed to spend too much time talking to him, but I'm going to leave you alone. Go check upstairs on the night. Um, 
So yeah, I think Sir Kristoff is actually not, yeah, I love the way they stand now that they're like officially flagged as knights. Okay, and when you're done, you've got to come clean up. All right, so now that dinner is wrapped up, the boys are pretty much released to kind of do whatever they want. And I think this is where I want to go ahead and have Jasper spend a little bit of time with May. So of course, we're just going to have to use the phone to invite her over but let's go ahead and do that i feel like they have a little spot that they like to sneak off to jasper just he's not like allowed to have like girls over to the castle but they have a little spot since she's just over off at the main castle they sneak off together so invite to hang out at current lot Jasper's gonna go ahead and head off down. So the castle is right there. And then there's this little beach down off to the side that not too many people pay attention to. So this is where him and Maya like to run off together. Okay, we're getting so many different pop-ups. But this is where him and Maya like to run off and spend their time together. Oh, she's looking so beautiful in her new dress. So they are just gonna say, what did he want to do? He wants, to, oh, he just wants to chat with her. So let's ask how things have been going at the castle and see how things go with them. Maybe they'll do a little stargazing since that's kind of like the first thing. Um, okay, Wesley, leave us alone. We're... Oh, they're so cute. Okay, so let's do a little bit of flirting. Oh my gosh, hear about Maya's career. I love that. She's telling him all about what it's been like to be lady in waiting in the castle. She misses her family, but she does still get to see them quite a bit. And let's see what else. Maybe we'll do an embrace. I've been keeping it pretty like um like not too intense i have they haven't even had their first kiss yet compliment her appearance Ooh, suggestive conversation okay jasper tone it down buddy tone it down let's go ahead and oh my god she's such a goofball okay sweet talk <laughs> I don't think they would actually be allowed to hang out like this alone. Um, so they just like to sneak off and do their own thing. I want to cloud, I want to have them cloud gaze. Um, or maybe at this point it would be stargaze. Let's see if that's an option. Yeah, ask to stargaze because this is what they did when they were kids. They would hang out and stargaze. Look at the ship out there. That's part of the medieval Windenburg override mod. I love it so much. So they're just going to have a little bit of... Hold on, I want to take the group off so we don't have that annoying thing over her head. So let's disband the group. I want to get like a good screenshot of them. But here they are just looking up at the stars together. Ugh. I love these guys. Ugh. So we're going to see what's going to happen because I do want to have like an event at the castle where like, I don't know, it's like kind of like a ball, I guess. And there's gonna be like other women there. And I don't know if they're gonna be trying to like set Jasper up with like someone of higher rank or not since he's a knight. So we will see what happens, but he is very much, his whole heart is with Maya. They love each other. And I'm sure they've been talking about getting married. He's almost of age. I've decided for right now, I'm not gonna get my Sims married when they're teens. We may change that right now, but it's like, I don't know, for some reason my game gets really complicated and it doesn't work well when, um, when uh, that's working. Okay, I just realized my game sounds aren't on, so I'm gonna turn those <laughs> on now. So I apologize for the beginning of the episode. My game sounds weren't on, but I just realized. So right now I was listening to the waves and hearing everything, so sorry about that. But okay, we're gonna go ahead and wrap things up with these guys right now. And for now, I think I'm actually, we've got a good catch up with Jasper. He's a squire now. He's building up his relationship with Maya. He's figuring out what news he's gonna share on Anora. 
And so we're going to head back to our main household because we have a lot to catch up with them. So Jasper's got to get back and sneak back into the castle and I'll catch up with you when we're in the main household. All right, so we are back in our main household and we are just here with Penelope, Kenrick, and Rosalyn. It is in the night and poor Penelope has not been feeling well. I just want to say trigger warning because I am going to play out her death on cam. So if that is something that you do not feel comfortable with, feel free to skip ahead to the next part in the video. But Penelope did not survive her famine death roll and she had come down with a sickness in the last episode. For, so for the storyline, I decided that she did not survive the sickness. And so they are here with her. She has not been doing well. She is in bed for the night. They have been trying all kinds of medicine and herbs that they got from Angela the herbalist down the street, but nothing seems to be working, unfortunately. So they have been spending a lot of the nights up with her, just keeping an eye on her, seeing how she is doing. But unfortunately, this is the night that things are going to take a turn for the worst. So I've tried out a couple different ways. I'm not sure because we've had so little death in the game. I'm not really an expert. And so what I've decided to do is just use MC Command Center. Um, so the way that I play tested this out, I was able to go into sim commands, maintain sim, and kill sim, which <laughs> makes me so sad. But then you've got a couple different options. I do have the children and toddler can die of anything mod, so I'm not sure if that helped make this available or if this is just in MC Command Center. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm, I wish there was one that said by sickness, um, but I'm just going to do by hunger. Um, technically she's going to be dying from sickness. I mean, technically the famine death roll is death by uh, starvation, but, um, we're going to do that one. And then what it will do is it will deplete her needs and it will trigger grim. So again, if you want to skip this part, feel free to skip ahead, but this is things that really did happen. So I imagine that she actually passes away in her sleep, but this is definitely going to be really hard for the family. This is their second Penelope that they are losing. So yeah, Rosalyn is now very sad mourning from witnessing death of a loved one. Okay, so Grim is here now and they are all so upset. Oh my gosh, this makes me is so sad but i think rosalyn the rules do say that we can i'm not gonna plead oh no she's gone no penelope okay let's make grim leave because grim tends to get stuck on the lot why is Kenrick, you are like, Kenrick's like not even, okay, now he's sad. I was like about to say, I was like, uh, Kenrick, your daughter literally just died in front of you and you're like not even sad. Oh my gosh. I think he's going to, oh my goodness. We had to do it. Why, you're not happy, Kenrick. This is one of the things I hate about this game is like now all these other moodlets are like overriding it and like, you guys, here, try to cheer up. Rosalind, we did everything we could. We gave her a good life. We tried the medicine. Unfortunately, it just didn't work. He cheered her up. Now it says they're both happy. They're not happy. They're sad. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the urn in Rosalind's inventory for right now. Ignore Kenrick glitched out. But... Okay, Kendrick being all romantic right now. <laughs> Guys, this is not the mood. Your daughter just died. But Sims be Sims. Okay, now he's sad again. They're on an emotional roller coaster. Okay, Kendrick, why don't you come cry it out? Wait, why did her... Oh, did her moodlet for sadness go away because he cheered her up? Is that what happened? I don't know. Go to sleep. I'm sending them to bed. <laughs> I will catch up with you when they wake up in the morning. We will... Set up Penelope's gravestone tomorrow, and then I have a lot of things on this slot that I want to update you on. But for right now, just a 
moment of silence for our our poor baby Penelope. May she rest in peace. All right, so it is now the next day and poor Adeline and May are feeling very sad about their sister's passing. And so Adeline is just stepping up and getting some gruel made for these guys. They are still really, really low on ingredients. We have very much not recovered from the famine at the moment. And so Adeline is going to help out mom and she's going to start now that she's getting older she is going to start taking over a lot more of the cooking. All right so these guys have finished up their breakfast and now everyone is going to head out together and they are going to bury Penelope out back with Papa Cedric and our other baby Penelope just like we've done in the past okay so they are all going to mourn poor baby penelope and just have a moment to remember her oh my gosh she had such a bright future ahead of her oh my gosh jasper sent us a letter i heard about the passing of someone special to you i wanted to offer my condolences jasper really actually didn't know penelope that well i mean of course he loves her because that's his sister but she was just a tiny tiny baby she was a newborn when he left for night training so he never really why is grim here Grim might honestly be here for one of the chickens because I've been getting notifications. But anyways, we'll talk about that in a second because right now is about poor Penelope. So these guys are just having their moment. And then I'm going to go ahead. For some reason, I had to move that because it wouldn't let them mourn. And let's go ahead and have Roslyn plant a flower like she does for everyone. So that way we can remember our poor baby Penelope. So now we have Penelope. Penelope. Oh, he is here for the chickens. Okay, I'll talk about that in just a second. But right now, May's custom content is glitching out. And then, of course, we have Papa Cedric here and now baby Penelope. So we've got our little graveyard um, right here out back by the tree. And so we'll go ahead and let these guys have their moment. But I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to send, or let's have May come over. Oh, poor May. May, she just had to bury her sister, and now the poor chickens are getting taken away. So I have been getting some notifications that the chickens were, you know, getting old. And I've decided, I'm, I'm trying to just figure out how I want to do this for gameplay, because... Um, if I trade the chickens in, I'm exclusively using the Yield Cookbook mod, and the chicken from the coop is not compatible with um, the EO cookbook bot, so then it just kind of gets wasted. So what I think I've decided I'm gonna do is like just let Grim and come and take them. And whenever Grim comes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to build mode. I'll show you, and I'm just gonna give them a chicken from like as if they went hunting. So Grim coming will be like the signal that like the chicken has been butchered, and um, we'll do it that way. I think is what I'm gonna do. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone into the debug and live edit menu and that does show the items from the EO cookbook mod, which one of those is when you go hunting, you get chicken. So what I've done is we just had a chicken pass. So I am just going to basically give them a chicken. I'm actually going to add the 45 simoleons back because we didn't need to buy that. We are going to just say the chicken was butchered. I don't know. This is kind of like a meticulous way to do it. I might just go back to trading the meat in and then just use the regular stove. We'll see. But for right now, that is what I am going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in Adeline's inventory because I'm going to have her in charge of the food for the moment. And then I want to show you guys a little bit of what I have done with the lot. I'm going to have May go ahead and change her outfit because her... Custom content is glitching out. I need to get some of my CC fixed and replaced again. And so I'm going to get these guys going on the tavern. What I want to do, May is going to focus on the animals. I want them to slowly start getting more and more animals. So let's see, can we do it from May? Buy many goats and sheep. So I want to buy some sheep so that way... We have wool for like cross-stitching and stuff for Adeline. 
Um, but for right now, we're not going to get a cow because I'm still going to go with storyline that is difficult to get the larger livestock. But we can go ahead and get a mini goat. We don't have like a ton of money. We're like, I, I'll show you why we don't have any money. Um, we're literally down to 63 simoleons, but we are going to build that back up. I went ahead and I have added on to this lot. It's a little bit dark and hard to see at the moment, but I made this a little bit more of like a closed in courtyard area. And I did add a little chapel here, similar to like what I did in the castle for Sir Bishop. But I wanted to start making um, religion a little bit more of a part of their daily life. I actually think um, Kenrick and Rosalind are going to head over here into the chapel right now. But I have been watching like a ton of videos on YouTube of life in like the medieval times. And so um, they definitely spent a lot of time in their chapels. And my vision for this lot from the very beginning was to make this feel like a little village. And so it's slowly building up over time. We've got the tavern, we've got the main house, the gardens, the, the farm animals, the stables in the back. And now we have a little staple here in the main courtyard. And I want to just continue. This is a 64 by 64 lot. So we actually have all of this area in the back to continue like filling in with different things. But I wanted to have a very village like feel and it's really cool when they open up the tavern for business people will just kind of come and be hanging around and it feels really lively and I really love it. But for right now Kinnick and Rosalyn are just spending a moment saying some prayers in the chapel with everything with the famine now losing Penelope Nora running away not sure not knowing if she's alive or dead. I think they are just really turning to their religion to find peace in that. They think, you know, I think a lot of people around the time of the famine, they were thinking like they must be all doing something wrong. That's why they're being punished and things like that. So I don't know. I don't want to dive like too deep into religion. I want to be like respectful of it, but it was a big part of their life. So I put a little chaplet down. And then for right now, I think Kenrick is actually going to come. We've got, we still have to continue with business as usual. These guys are really, really low on money following the famine. They don't have a lot of food. Um, Kenrick is on the mend from his illness, but he, um, so he's able to tend the bar. That's not too much for him. And then Rosalind is going to get going on. We already have a bunch of honey. So I'm going to get her going on that. And let's see, May is, do we have the, our new animals? Yes, let's go ahead and place them in the world. And I think May is going to take over. Oh my gosh, May has an illness. Dizzy from illness. May can't tell if it's her or the rest of the world that's spinning. Oh no. And now it's pouring rain. Oh my gosh, these poor guys. It has just been a sad day. We just sold a classic meat though. That's good because we need money. Okay, we're up to 200 simoleons again. It's like back to the beginning. We've got to build everything back up. Nope, we can't talk to Jasper. I'm just going to say Jasper sent a letter. We sent him a letter that Penelope was falling really ill and he's responded that he was not able to come out because now that he is squire, his allegiance is to the uh, to Sir Bishop and the kingdom. So he sends his condolences, but he's not able to come. All right, May, I want you to build your relationship with the new animals and we're going to have to give them names. I want to give them names that May would pick out. So maybe like nature inspired, some nature inspired names. I think the king just walked in. Oh my God, the king is stopping by. He's going to talk to Rosalind. I don't even know if we actually can talk to him. Um, no. But we're going to say he's stopping by and he's like, all right, uh, Rose and Thorns, like now that things are getting going, I really need you guys to get sucked up. We're starting to run low on meat in the castle and everyone loves you guys is the best. So we really need to get you guys um, going on another order. So they are feeling the pressure from the kingdom big time for sure. So let me make sure Rosslyn, they're not listening to me right now. <laughs> okay. So Ross is going to get going on that and she can collect this honey. Adeline is going to come up. I did place down the loom. I'm not, I haven't really gotten to a point where I love um, this. It costs quite a lot. Like we can weave different fabrics and stuff and I think she can make clothing. So I've, I've worked her up to a higher level to see how we can make this stuff. But because we don't 
have like the ingredients at the moment. It's like actually quite expensive. Like that's gonna cost. Anora Rosenthorn is wondering if I want to go over to her house and hang out. No. Sorry, Anora. We will get to you in a minute. Right now, we haven't been checking in on Anora because, um, you know, she's on the run. So right now, I imagine she is actually hiding out at her little hideout that is really close by. We are going to catch up with her soon. Uh, but for right now, we're just kind of focusing on Jasper's household because he's about to take over sort of officially as Jin 2 when he becomes a young adult. And, but we're still gonna keep following all of the family members, but Adeline is just kind of on the run. So we will catch up with her when there's sort of like a development in her story. So for right now, these guys are just on the grind. So, oh, the queen is here. They definitely are making sure that we are getting our meat going. And then actually I'm gonna have May help out because May can do that. Okay, good. We're selling me. We're up to 800 simoleons. So we are working on it. But I really love the feel of like the new courtyard. I don't know. It's just a little bit of a change. Um, one of the things actually I forgot to mention, I added these silkworm objects. Um, so it they are kind of like a replacement of the bug thing from Eco Lifestyle, whatever that's called, <laughs> the insect farm. Um, and so I want to see how this works. I'm not sure yet. I haven't been able to collect anything yet. So I'm working on that for Adeline to be able to spin silk. Um, so I think she would be interested in making higher quality fabrics. And then I do want to talk about Adeline. I want to make sure this is so like hands on with the honey pressing. Let me give Rosalyn a few more jars. Let's divvy these up between May and Rosalyn and get this honey pressing going. Um, can she make any meat first? Yeah, we, wait, I think that was gonna charge us. Yeah, go ahead and press the honey. May, get back over here, we are working. So Adeline is actually, um, we talked about her last episode when she aged up. I'm gonna get her going. Oh my God, Jasper, <laughs> leave us alone. Jasper keeps calling. Um, so I'm gonna get Adeline going upstairs to her loom. Um, so she had the whim last episode to become enemies with the queen. And so many of you had such good suggestions as to what that was. And for someone to have her admire this new possession, because I think she would do that. But, um, I think the reason is she is actually jealous of the queen's status. Like her, she saw her family struggle so much through the famine and she just sees that the, uh, royals have everything and they have nice clothes and they have food and they don't really have to struggle for anything and she wants that she really wants to marry into a household of higher status and she doesn't want to see herself and her family have to struggle so she is seeing if she can work her way up the ranks through her seamstress to career so we will see how that plays out um i think i would like to see her maybe get married into a slightly higher status like maybe she'll marry like a baron or an Earl or something, we will see. Uh, we'll have to do, actually, I wanna do marriage roles. Um, I, I wanna do a marriage role for her this episode. So we will actually probably do that before we wrap because I wanna make sure that she is actually gonna get married because we can go two different directions depending on if she rolls for marriage or not. I really hope she does. I really can see Adeline having a beautiful family. So, all right. May back on it, but look how lively the lot gets. Hold on, I just want to disable some umbrellas because I really, it like really messes with the vibe when everyone has umbrellas since it's rainy. Um, but it gets really lively, like people come and hang out in the courtyard and stuff like that. Did you make, okay, so we do have a blouse in our inventory that she made, so. Okay, Adeline, I'm just going to let you do whatever you want so I can focus on Rosalyn and May. Okay, Rosalyn, I told you to make me. Go make me. You guys are getting way too chatty with everyone hanging around. And then press honey. Okay, and then collect honey. And let's make sure the honey gets transferred to your mom for me. They're in full on... Business. Okay, good. We're selling lots of mead. Okay, Rosalyn, you gotta hurry up. We're almost out. We've only got two meads left. So let's get that going. 
Okay, look at the animals art. Right, they're just like, they love May. They love her so much. Oh, it's so gloomy out here. And how's Kenrick doing over there? He's getting a little sleepy. Okay, can you make any more, Rosalind? Light that up. Adeline, I will go ahead and send you up to your loom. Let's go ahead and weave some woolen fabric. Let's, oops, she can do rugs. We don't have the ingredients, so it's going to cost us 150 simoleons. But that's okay for right now because I just want her building the skill. Let's see, let's do a medieval castle rug. I'm really curious because I want to see what those can sell for, sell for. And I'm not sure if we can sell them on like the marketplace table. I'm thinking probably not. But maybe we'll do something similar like we do with the mead where we deliver it to the castle and maybe we'll start like what we'll do is maybe the next time we deliver mead to the castle, we'll bring Adeline and some of the things that she's created and sort of pitch her uh, skills to the kingdom. So maybe that's what we'll do. She'll get to go the next time we take mead. So these guys got to work really hard because it's going to help advance their entire family. Let's see. Rosalind, where are you at? Collect the honey. And then do you, what do you have in here? Okay, you haven't, I thought, oh yeah, she did make a meat. Fill in the bottle so we can get that on the shelves and start making some monies. Okay. Oh my God, look at all these people in here. Okay, Mira's in here and I need to, I need to talk about the side household a little bit too. There's just like so much to catch up on this episode, I feel like, because I haven't played in so long and I really want to start to get back into a groove with the series. Whoops, I said that one not for sale. Okay, set for sale, set for sale. Okay, those are all for sale now. Okay, look at this. Someone pointed this out. One of you noticed. Mira and Rosalyn have, they like hate each other. Something happened when we were playing in the other households and they hate each other. Um, and so for you guys who've been with the series since the beginning, you're aware that um, it was actually Kenrick and Caspian who had the falling out and were not getting along. And Rosalind and Mira were getting along really well. But for whatever reason, um, they've had a falling out since then. And Mira had been struggling a lot with infertility and had really kind of always envied Rosalind and all of her healthy, beautiful children. And I don't know, I think maybe their falling out is around something like that. Maybe they reached out for help during the famine, but you know, we were dealing with so much of our own stuff. We weren't really able to help her. Caspian was away at sea. She was home all alone with Liam. And so I think something happened between all of these guys where now there's just a big rift between the whole family. So I'm really hoping to see everyone come back together. But right now the family is definitely somewhat estranged. So. Keep her going on honey can the kids can kids harvest honey from the bees okay honey is full okay no the kids cannot har harvest it so we'll have Rosalind come okay that one's only partially full so let's leave it that one's partially full and that one's partially full and then while we're here we can also harvest strawberries actually I forgot I was gonna do one harvest a season it's so hard to remember so I'll just let her harvest because I've already queued her for it here, May, you can come have a break. Adeline, you need to get some food for everyone. Oh no, the gruel spoil. I probably should actually send her out. We're gonna have to make gruel again. It's 7 p.m., let's go ahead. Okay, Kendrick's getting very tired. So let's go ahead and close down the bar and close down the store. Rosalind, did you get the honey? Why did you not harvest these? Are you like too uncomfortable to harvest? You are. Okay, well, we'll just leave that be. Go ahead and call everyone to the meal. You're doing so great helping take care of everyone. Adeline, you have really stepped up so mom can focus on the meat business. May is doing an excellent job taking care of the animals so that way Kenrick can focus on the bar. Everyone's still so sad. Oh my God, they keep getting sick. May is sick. I know some of you guys do actual death rolls when your Sims get sick. I haven't gotten to the point where I'm brave enough to do that yet. So we'll see how it goes. Um, May will get some food and then we will definitely have her go down to bed. Um, Cause I'm gonna, I wanna show you guys how it worked. I'm gonna have her get water. All right, so this is what's been happening in my game a lot. Like my Sims just keep getting stuck and it's really annoying, but it's okay. 
So I'm gonna see if this works because this was working in one of my other save files. Like if they got sick and then they got some water, they would get a moodlet. Let's see, right now she's still dizzy from illness, but if they would take a nap and drink water, then they would get a moodlet that they were um, naturally working on their sickness, but it might depend on which sickness. So I'm just, it's 9 p.m. She could technically just like go to sleep. But I'm going to put her down for a nap specifically. And then we'll check in on her moodlets to see. Oh, my God. And now Rosslyn, too. Okay. Rosslyn. Oh, my God. Sickness is just... You would think we're in the plague already. Okay. Here, Rosslyn. Come get some water. Oh, my God. Kenrick, stop. Get out of the way. Okay. Rosslyn, get some water. And then we'll send you to bed and see if you get the moodlet as well that you're fighting your illness. So what do you have? Nauseous, Rosalind is fighting a be uh, battle the belly. Yeah, the gruel probably didn't go down so well. So let's go ahead. Actually, you need to use the chamber pot. And you may have noticed I'm also starting to play a little bit quicker at the moment. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so Adeline has completed the, the rug. I'm assuming we're not able to put can we put this in our inventory? Oh, thank God. That thing was massive. How much is that? Okay, if we were to sell it straight from inventory, it's 810 simoleons. The blouse that she made, what? The blouse that she made is 1,350 simoleons. How is that? Is it made of silk or something? It's a child blouse and it is like almost twice the price of the rug. Okay. Well, this could end up being a very lucrative career for her. So we'll have her make up a couple of samples of things. And next time we go to the castle, we will have her show off her stuff and her skills and see if anyone at the castle is interested. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to send Adeline to bed, get her down. May is already resting. Kenrick is about to pass out. So yeah, let's definitely get him to bed. Um, and then Rosalind off to bed as well. It's 10 p.m. Everyone is feeling really, really sick. Oh no, we're going to have to empty the chamber pot. So that's ready for the morning. I'm so sorry you're sick. But yeah, <laughs> before I noticed that giant rug, I was saying I'm playing a little bit quicker through now um, just because i it's going to take us forever just to get through the whole series. Um, so some episodes I will play a little bit quicker gameplay. Some episodes we will really like zoom in on a particular part of the storyline and we'll kind of bounce between the two different styles of gameplay as we get to different parts in the story. Um, so I'm going to send her to bed. Uh, May, where are you going? Oh, it's because you only took a nap. So let's check in on your moodlets. Yeah, so she's got the moodlet from Home Remedy Hydration. So they get this, um, sometimes simple home remedies are the best medicine. So I've been trying to do that more with my Sims when they get sick since this timeline, they didn't have like tons of medicine and stuff like that. Um, so I love that that worked. Did Rosalyn get the same thing? I'm not sure because hers was like... Um, Battle of the Belly. So her thing just went away completely. Her moodlet. Um, we need to do laundry for sure. Um, but I want to, before we wrap things up, I want to go ahead and quickly do a roll for um, Adeline as a side household just to see if she's going to get married. Because Depending on that, we can see what storylines we want for her because I for sure wanted her to go the route of trying to rise the ranks. But if she doesn't get married, maybe we go more lady in waiting or something like that, like getting her on the court. And then if she does get married, then maybe we can have her like marry and make an Earl or something like that. I don't know, and then tie her story in with Jasper as to how that happened. So let's just look at the roles for marriage really quickly. So for 1300s for the side household marriage roles, um, you have to roll to see um, if they get married and how many children. So we roll a D20. And so when they're a child, we roll D20. Well, she's a teen now, but I'm figuring this all out. Um, if it's a one, two, a three, then they never marry. And if they roll a four to 20, then they do get married. And then there's the number of pregnancy tries. I don't know that I'm going to do the pregnancy tries. That's just a lot more to track than I care to have to try to keep up with. Um, I'll just let the game decide whether they like have good fertility or not. Um, but for right now, we'll for sure do the marriage roll. So let me go ahead and pull out the D20 roll. Okay, so we're not going to count that because that was just the dice loading. So let's go ahead and roll. 11. Okay, so good. So she rolled an 11. So she is going to get married. I'm so happy. I really, really, really saw Adeline getting married. Definitely of all of the children, her the most. Um, so 
that is really good. So she will be getting married. So I want to put some love interests together, start weaving her story in. I think what we'll do is we will definitely take her to the castle. I think that seems like a great idea. And maybe they notice like what a beauty she is, like how fine the clothing is that she makes and they take an interest in her similar to Jasper. I think they have a lot of trust in the Rosenthorn family, but I think Honora has definitely sort of tainted that a little bit with the castle heist. Uh, maybe the castle has, well, I guess they have put two and two together that it is this Rosenthorn family because Jasper knows that's his sister. So they definitely know that Honora um, is connected to them. But so far what they've noticed is the rest of the Rosenthorn family seems to have a lot of honor and be very trustful. So we'll see what happens with them. Um, I had a lot of fun filming this episode. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it here. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.